All right. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce you all to Cooper Saunders. Cooper is my friend and also a colleague. We work together uh, with legal marketing and branding, which Cooper has helped me quite a bit with. Today, Cooper was kind enough to answer some questions that I think are of interest to anyone who is in their own law firm, thinking about starting their own law firm. But also, if you happen to be in law school, this is vital information that certainly I did not get, but which I really would like you students to have. So, uh, Cooper, just briefly introduce yourself, and then I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Miller, for having me on. I'm Cooper Saunders, and I own Wise Guys Digital Marketing. I've been in the digital marketing field for around seven years now and really have a passion for not only marketing, but educating people and really informing them what they need to do to grow their firm. Great. And you do a great job of that. Can you specifically tell lawyers what it is that you can do for a law firm? Yeah. So depending on what the law firm's goals are, right? At the end of the day, we help them grow, whether that's pay-per-click campaigns, whether that's SEO, whether it's getting a better website to show off their brand. At the end of the day, we grow law firms. And so that's really, in a nutshell, what we do and what I do. I think a lot of lawyers, when they talk to a marketer or anybody who is a potential vendor, Mm -hmm. worry about year-long contracts uh, that they can't get out of irrespective sometimes of performance. How do you operate? Do you operate with uh, built-in contracts or what's your philosophy? Yeah. And so the way I got into digital marketing was I was helping my grandparents. They called me up and they said, hey, Cooper, we've got this digital marketing company, not sure what they're doing but we're not happy. We're not seeing results. And so when I went out there, they were tied into a year long contract. And at that time, you know, I understand year long contracts and I get it. But at that time I was the person that was like, Hey, this is not fair. Why would they do this? Especially if they're not providing results, you know, cl your clients Miller can fire you if they're not happy. Why can't they? And so my philosophy is always, if we're bringing people value, they'll want to stay. We don't need to tie them down in year long contracts. And so we're month to month. I believe if you're happy, you'll stay. Great. I think it's one of the things that I appreciate most about you is that you yeah. understood yeah. that that's how business works for you know the vast majority yeah. of lawyers. And yeah. um, because of that, you partner with with folks rather than mm -hmm. you know, yeah. locking us in and we never hear from you again. Yeah. And I mean, what is marketing gonna change your law firm in a month? No, but you still should have, you know, I'm very clear of, okay, yeah, it is month to month. Will you see life changing results in one month? No, but you should see improvement as you go along. You should enjoy the relationship and you should know that, you know, all the information that you're receiving is, is good information. So that's another vital aspect of the uh, month to month agreements. One of the mantras, if you will, of marketing campaigns that you often hear is, well, you just have to spend more. And if you spend more, you're going to get more. But that raises a problem if you're a smaller law firm mm -hmm. that you have a, a set budget. How do you view the idea that you always have to spend more in order to get more leads or customers? Yeah. And so my main goal is first achieving the goals the law firm has set for us, right? So if they're saying, hey, I want 10 cases of X, that's what we're going to do. And so the whole philosophy of you just have to spend more to make more, you know, I believe in my approach is you have to have more strategy toward it. And so if you're just, you, you come to me and you're like, hey, Cooper, I want to target this service. Well, we're going to create a plan and we're going to have extreme focus. Okay, this is how you're going to get there. And spending more is kind of just the scapegoat of marketing companies that don't really know what they're doing. If you've got a marketing company that, especially digital marketing, then you'll have a better time and, and kind of, hey, you just have to spend more. Well, first, we got to understand if you spend more on what you're doing, is that really going to generate results? Now, if you've got four or five cases coming in consistently and you're like, hey, I want to I get more cases coming in, well, then I'd be like, hey, let's spend more. But um, 
kind of adding fuel to a non-existent fire is not going to help your law firm. When somebody comes to you and wants to start a new campaign or a new marketing plan, one of the values I've seen is that you have a lot of different case studies. Yeah. So for instance, if I told you, Cooper, I want to start doing personal injury law. Yeah. And my marketplace is the Denver metropolitan area. Tell me about what it is that you could do to give me an idea of how many inquiries there are for mm -hmm. personal injury, broadly speaking. And then if you have any case studies that you could uh, mirror me up against so that I could have some qualitative information to make a decision as to whether or not I want to start some sort of new marketing campaign. Yeah. Yeah. And so the first thing I would do is kind of ask you, you know, cause personal injury is such a big marketplace and there's a lot of big players, especially in Denver, Kansas city, Dallas. Right. And so first thing that we have to do is identify what subcategory we can dominate. And so if you're looking at motorcycle accidents or semi-truck accidents, that's the first thing that we'll look at because again, personal injury is such a big market. Now, after that, after we identify, you know, okay, let's go motorcycle accidents. I'll pull up case studies from different cities that we've achieved the number one ranking for in local SEO and say, Hey, you know, in Kansas city or Dallas, there's about the same amount of searches as Denver. And when he ranked number one, this is how many calls they got. And this is how many of those calls turned into paying customers. And while, you know, the paying customers are the cases that you brought on varies depending on the sales skills you have as an attorney, I can look at, okay, this is what we did to rank them. Number one, this is how many searches there are, and this is how many turned into leads for the lawyer to then close. So um, we've got over 200 case studies, 300 case studies of successful marketing campaigns we've implemented for law firms. And so it gives us an inside view on what we're going to do, how we did it, and the amount of searches and calls you'll generate. So if I understand you right, you you have the ability to pull up a case study that says yeah. in Dallas, I'm just making this up here. In yeah. Dallas, my client got 200 calls a month mm -hmm. in these personal injury categories. And then you can dial that down and say, but out of that 200 phone calls, 20 became cases of value. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And so um, that's one of the most valuable things that people want to see is that, okay, while I explain, you know, of course it's sales skills and all that good stuff. That's one of the things that they really like to see because with marketing, you very rarely get to see that inside view. Okay. Yeah, and to me, that's crucial because when you take your monthly marketing mm -hmm. budget, if you can have a rough idea yeah. of A, how many calls you're going to get, and then B, how many calls you might convert into mm -hmm. actual clients, then you can make the return on investment analysis, yes. which is crucial. And it changes it from being just throwing money up against a wall and seeing what sticks. Instead, you can say, look, here are my numbers. Yeah. And I can I can come up with a true idea of what my next month will look like and the month afterwards. Yeah. And it's huge for lawyers, especially the smaller law firms that, you know, just don't have money to blow. You know, they want to get a good understanding of what I'm going to bring them and, and the results they'll expect. And one of the, so just to take that down to even a more understandable level, mm -hmm. when I work with you and if we set up a campaign and then we talk again, let's say in a couple of weeks or two months down the road as we do our check-ins, one of the things we talk about is is the phone ringing? Am I getting inquiries through the internet, through yeah. my email? Because that then tells you is what we are doing and trying to achieve actually working, right? Yes. And fair enough, sometimes you have to change things up, right? Yeah. But that ability to look at your marketing plan and what you're trying to achieve with that sort of granularity allows you the ability to say, 
this isn't working, Miller. We need to change off of whatever key terms we've we've tried to put in there and use some other ones. And you can compare to your other marketplaces and say, this is what's working in Dallas or Phoenix mm -hmm. or Kansas City, right? Yeah. And especially with COVID hitting, you know, I think that a lot of law firms like that, okay, it's not your, this is your plan. You're sticking to it. There's no changing it. You know, I like to be flexible. If a law firm calls me say, Hey, we had an outstanding month last month, this month, maybe we'll spend a thousand bucks instead of 2000 because we don't need as much, many cases. That's completely fine. Or, Hey, we need to ramp it up or, Hey, the holiday season's a bit slow. Can we pull back advertising? And then on the first of the year, we can ramp it up. That's great. And I think that whenever COVID hit, I think me and you worked together and with all of our clients was the biggest thing because, you know, if you're stuck in a year long contract and this is what you're paying, no matter what, that's a scary position for smaller law firms that maybe didn't have or do not have the funds to just blow, especially if there's not cases coming in. Sure. Well, I think that's right. And that was a huge value that you gave me and everybody else who you worked with was the flexibility yeah. and the understanding. Yeah, of course. Two questions here. Uh, one, who is your ideal customer? And two, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah, so ideal customer is really law firms that are looking to grow and law firms that need someone to kind of lean on. I always kind of say, I'm your outsourced CMO, right? I want you to feel like, hey, you can trust me. You can lean on me. I kind of work for your law firm now. So it's people that want somebody that they can call up and say, hey, what do you think about this? Just bounce ideas off. Um, that's, you know, people like you, people like um, that are open-minded, just looking to grow and then getting in touch with me. I mean, you can shoot me a text at 816-708-0814. That's my cell. Or you can shoot me an email at cooper at wiseguysdm.com. And we actually have a book, which you have in a forward that we've got coming out on January 15th that's grow your law firm. And I kind of talk about my philosophy and a step-by-step -step plan to implement a marketing campaign in your law firm that'll actually work and get results. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned the book because one of the things that law school and legal education in general does a really poor job at is talking about how we market our services and how we can show the value of the business that we have. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I just made a LinkedIn post about even if you're in law school, you know, create a website for yourself, create the Google My Business profile because, you know, start building your LinkedIn because it's never too early to start marketing yourself, building a presence, you know, adding stuff to your website because your personal brand is more important than anything. Because even if you graduate, you get a job, but then you want to move, you know, you've got that, you know, you've got those reviews and all that good stuff to to carry with you. Yeah, great point. And it's a it's something I wish I had learned earlier. So yeah. we're trying to get the message out. Of course. Cooper, thanks so much for agreeing to take some time out of your day, answer these questions. I certainly hope that folks in my network find it useful. I found it useful. Yeah. And I'm glad that we could spend this time together. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you.